Wherever you may be, welcome to I think Northwest Now. Uh, this is a big one today. <clears throat> uh, by the way, Doug Zanger, Executive Director, Think Northwest. Uh, we serve Oregon, Washington, Idaho, British Columbia, uh, Alaska. And like I said a second ago, this is a big one. This is this one is uh, is very very special, and this is the first time that we've done this for this particular thing and you're saying okay that's very cryptic uh judging by the um the title of this thing doug that it has something to do with logo remix <laughs> which is which is very very accurate and you know i want to share some of our previous stuff i mean we have artists doing truly amazing stuff pacific northwest artists who reinterpret the Think Northwest logo. So we got some fun guy there. I love the unity in this one. Uh, I, I That's, it's just great. <laughs> and then you got the tattoos. And then I actually have taken, have taken a few of these and turned them into the backs of my Think Northwest business cards. And when I put, I, what I do is I have five of them. And what I will do is, I will lay them out artwork first and I will say, go ahead and pick the one that you like the best. And they go, Ooh, that's interesting. I've never seen anything quite like that. And so some people pick the tattoo. Some people pick the, the head. Some people pick this. Some people pick the, the, that, uh, but it's really, really fun. And it's a, it, you know, it's something that um, we just love doing because it shows just how great creativity is here in the Pacific Northwest. It's a chance to uh, get to know some talent here in the Pacific Northwest. And it's a chance for you as members and the, uh, the creative world at large in the Pacific Northwest to work with this talent. And we are bringing in uh, this month's artist in Seattle, Sharmila, what's going on? Hey. Thank you for inviting me into this. Oh, I, you know, it's it's so funny because the the brief that we give people, the brief that we give all the artists is, you know, do your thing. <laughs> right. We didn't we didn't give you necessarily a ton of we didn't really give you a ton of direction. But that's the beauty of it is we give you some guidelines, but we we definitely did not. It, we, we're just not prescriptive. It's like, this is, this is your, this is your thing. So um, tell, before we reveal the logo, I'd love for you to tell people a little bit more about you. And as you're talking, I'm going to pull up your portfolio site because I'm telling you crazy good work here. So tell us a little bit more about you. Yeah. So I'm a motion designer. Uh, I'm a graphic designer. I'm a motion designer. I do UI stuff. I, do product design stuff. So I wear a multiple, I wear multiple hats at my work. And in my website specifically, you see all the design illustrations that I made and animations I made. Uh, all of them are passion projects. Uh, so you see colorful, cute, and minimalistic style mostly. Yeah, I enjoy okay. doing passion projects. Yeah, this is clean. I mean, look at just... That's the thing is tell me about your philosophy. You've, you've touched on your philosophy a little bit, but um, you know, th this is really, really clean. And then this is a really interesting project here. Uh, calligraphy meeting generative um, art. Talk about this project a little bit, because I, what I'm seeing with, with generative AI is th there seems to be a little bit of a sea of sameness and the prompts might be improving or the technology might be improving but this is really a very important topic within the creative community so talk a little bit about this project yeah like everybody i just started exploring ai i see a lot of evolution right from where i just took my first steps uh, so in this project especially so i was randomly just thinking I should re-explore the calligraphy, which I used to do a lot, but haven't really touched in the recent times. Right. I was doing calligraphy and I observed AI is not, it's generating beautiful images, but not doing anything with text. 
So I thought, okay, I'll take some AI generated images and see how I incorporate my own uh, text visuals onto it. And that's where it started. I wanted to make images of beautiful, cute kids having dreams, have higher dreams and hope in life. And yeah. uh, so that that's, that's somehow reflects my thinking because uh, I'm a designer today because I dreamt something like this beautiful uh, when of when I'm of this age. So yeah, this the, all that come came together and that's my combination of uh, my own uh, uh, right. what, what do you say colorful calligraphy upon the AI yep. images. So wait, I went to the Etsy shop. This is your Etsy shop? Yeah, yeah. So I've recently started the uh, uh, my Etsy shop and I'm just taking my initial steps. It, it hasn't gone anywhere yet, but yeah, it just started. Look at this. There they yeah, are. I'm, oh my gosh. I think the screen isn't showing the Etsy shop, but anyways. Uh, this is great. Thanks. Uh, so I'm just making up some, making some mock-ups, some t-shirt design prints. Hold on. Let me, uh, I, I have to share the other screen. I keep forgetting that it's like, yeah, hold on. I got to share this other screen. So here is your Etsy shop. And then, um, and then you see there, there is the, let's see, uh, hold on, hold on. I got to present share screen. I got to go over to this one. There's the children's yeah. illustration that we were talking about. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so right now I, I only have mockups and digital prints right. for the sale, but uh, I'm looking forward to sell my own design, I mean, t-shirts. Oh uh, I just started printing. I'm printing some t-shirts. I'm printing some uh, stickers that will be soon on my Etsy shop. And that's right. what I'm looking forward to. Okay. So let's, yeah. So again, you've got, and then you have other stuff. I mean, obviously UI and UX, incredibly yes. important and valuable. Yes. Um, so brands, agencies know that she is here. She knows she knows what's cooking. Oh, and I didn't mean to be to be a pun <laughs> with this. <laughs> that worked well. But uh, oh, you know, you know, I'm a goofball. Um, but talk about the importance of UX and UI, even in art, because when you're a designer, you know, you, you said specifically that you're a motion designer, but all these other components are really important to, to ensuring that the job is well done. Yeah. So I'm mean, initially. Uh, illustrator, graphic designer, and motion designer. I know how to make visuals beautiful. I know, but uh, after joining the Microsoft, my current workplace, uh, I had to do some UI stuff. And then there I learned not only uh, visually aesthetic, but also why it is to be in that particular color or why, is, why a button should be in that position. Right. So I've learned that. I've learned uh, how to clearly uh, impact uh, my viewers. I learned a lot about UI UX uh, and I took the course of uh, the Google's UX design course and oh, okay. a lot over there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think, uh, I think have, even if you are not aiming to be a UI UX designer, I suggest my fellow designers peers to learn basics of it because you yep. know when to wear a, when to use a particular color or positioning a particular element in your design. Okay. That's fair. You'll have reasoning for everything. Yes. There is a reason for everything. I love this character animation. Look at that. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so you, if you see that cartoon, uh, the inspiration cartoon that I have on the top. Yeah. So that's from my favorite artist called Bapu he is an Indian artist and he does he, his comics used to be in our daily magazines and th that's my inspiration to get into you know the world of uh, creating cartoons and character animations so i have that inspiration and i developed uh, this character from that okay oh my gosh look at that i mean there's a series in this 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 uh this character looks a little uh mischievous yeah yeah he is a mischievous toddler yeah oh my gosh look at that and how you're blocking it out oh my goodness <clears throat> all right well this is this is getting a little too candy storish with me um, 
Uh, uh, also, my favorite project is that red one down there, the which logo one? reveal animation, the logo which animation. One? If you see the red one, the logo, uh, uh, yeah, the houses one, the one that you, the red, red and blue houses. Red and blue. Oh, this one. Yes. Got it. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So that's my favorite project. It is all. It also have a couple of ribbons on Behance. Okay. Yeah. How long is this? Uh, Twenty seconds. Let's take a look. Yeah, all of them are very short. Listen, this is coming from somebody who did like a fifteen-minute um, video about an ad we did at the Martin Agency. It was really good. <clears throat> but look at that. Yeah, I like playing with the three D. 2D elements that look like 3D. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. This is 2D animation, and I love exploring that. Yeah, and we have this. So Behance featured it a couple of times, and I received a lot of love from this project. That's great. Yeah, yeah. Behance is a great community. Um, wow. Okay. All right. I'm going to stop sharing the screen because I want to get to our logo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and um um you know you would you would you would you know talked about um you know your heritage and and inspiration from artists from india talk a little bit more about heritage and and where that inspires some of your design thinking uh to start with i uh i used to watch cartoon network a lot and i think tom and jerry is the one the f the first impact was made from tom and jerry i don't even know the term animation back then i just want to create something that i I've, I've been watching on uh, tv then and uh, i also used to read a lot of uh, cartoons in the magazine like you know the weekly cartoons the daily cartoons mm -hmm. in the magazine and uh, this artist called uh, Bapu is a filmmaker and a cartoonist, and uh, he used to make these uh, cute and not illustrations about a toddler, and that inspired me a lot. Yeah. So I used to replicate his drawings. I used to replicate uh, the Mickey Mouse, uh, Tom and Jerry, and all. Uh, I think that is the starting point. And uh, right. Yeah. To, to talk about heritage, uh, so all my life I was. Uh, inspired and surrounded by artists. Uh, my cousin is an artist. Uh, I used to adore his work and that's also an inspiration. Uh, and uh, like many Asian parents, my parents want me to focus on my academics. I done my uh, engineering, uh, computer science engineering first and then convinced my parents somehow that I'll uh, try uh, my career in the creative field. And uh, luckily I got into it. Uh, and uh, it, it is a long journey. It is a, a very long twist that I took from being a computer science engineer and uh, an animator. Yeah. Uh, what else? Um, yeah. So uh, also, I at school, uh, I used to draw a lot, win a lot of competitions. And uh, people around me always saw something in me and uh, uh, believed me that uh, I could do something in the creative field and I can have a decent career in it yeah so yeah so they all encouraged me to leave the country go to united states pursue your career there there is a lot of opportunity in united states right so i moved to us in 2015 pursued my master's in motion media and yeah it's it has taken a good turn uh, that's put, that's under, that, that <laughs> that's, that's under underscoring how like good this is. This is all really, really great stuff. And, you know, these projects, they, they, these are not necessarily quick term, but they're not long-term projects either. So again, we, uh, we gave you like a basic brief and here is our logo for November, 2023. Oh, look at that. Nice little nod to Seattle. You know, this is the first time that we've had like overtly Seattle on this, which which I really, really, really like. Um, and as you can see, we we changed the button here in the in the lower in the lower right. I like yeah. that I like that you just dove right into Seattle because um uh I, I like that that 
you you know you, you this interpretation and when you look at interpretations of seattle in general artistically um there's some level of predictability to this but what i liked about this is there is this cognitive dissonance the greens look the, the the greens just look so much more impactful and the way that you're structuring it it's not that the greens are of the you know in the trees per se but the green really emphasizes it. The Space Needle is a silhouette. I love just the light, the, how you played with the light with this. So walk us through, why don't you go ahead and walk us through how you initially wanted to approach it and then how it evolved to here. Yeah, while you're, you're saying how you see the logo, I'm very glad that what I've interpreted is what reflected very well. Uh, so at first I envisioned the logo as highly minimalistic, featuring monochromatic colors, specifically green on a black background. Uh, however, during the design process, I decided to infuse it with a brighter and more hopeful vibe. I incorporated the sun and its radiance to it, uh, uh, which in my opinion added depth to the logo. Right. Uh, also, I have this color choice of green because uh, so when I shut my eyes and think of uh, Seattle, the things I could imagine are uh, space needle, a lot of mountains and greenery. Right. So that's why I had that. Uh, and also a lot of buildings because it's a, it's a corporate hub. A lot of uh, globally recognized companies are in Seattle. There are a lot of job opportunities there. So that's how, that's why I have the space needle, greenery, mountains, and buildings. So let me bring it up. Let me bring it up so it's a little bit bigger so people can see this here. Um, so, yeah. And, and, and so I really see this. And again, I point to this because it's very easy to industrialize, <clears throat> to over industrialize um, an urban environment, especially with big buildings. But this is just, I mean, the Space Needle obviously is, is taking, um, is, is central into the logo. But I also see that these buildings here, it just, it just feels very natural. And, and ordinarily, urban environments don't necessarily look unnatural. And I will say this too. If you do a quick look at it, so if you do your head real quick, um, it's got a little Seattle Supersonics vibe to it. Now you came to Seattle. You came to the U.S. in 2015, right? Okay. Um, are you familiar with the sheer amount of uh, love and pain that Seattle basketball fans have gone through? No, I don't watch basketball, but yeah, I've heard of it. Okay, so this again, and it's just like this quick little thing where I'm looking at it, going, "It's got a little Sonics vibe to it." So whether you intended it or not, and it sounds like you didn't, you have done a great service to the people of Seattle, uh, to the people of Seattle. And by extension, awesome. the, that's a great interpretation. Yeah, yeah. Because the other thing too, is like, we're in Portland, but we'd like to have the Sonics back. We want that rivalry back. We'd love to have Vancouver have another team again. Awesome. Oh, it was the golden days. Um, so were there, so were there other directions that you were thinking of going on this or did you, did you lock in to the process early in? Uh, I think the design kind of evolved. I, I didn't, I was not planning with the buildings. I was not definitely not planning with the sun. Okay. Because I wanted to just incorporate all the iconic locations first, but right. then I thought, I'm working for Microsoft and I love and I love how the opportunities are expanded in Seattle and I wanted to focus on that and that's why there are buildings and right. I just looked around there's a lot of greenery and so it all evolved it just started the space needle was the first thing I sure. had on paper yeah yeah and that's you know and again that, that can become cliche right it's similar to Portland where it's Mount Hood and it mm -hmm. can become a little bit cliche but when it's when it's really but it's you know it's like oh there's a space needle again as opposed to oh look at that look at that interpretation of the space needle same as like oh it's mount hood again oh look at the way they're they're looking at that so there's familiarity in it but no i i love i absolutely love where where this is <laughs> where is this and we're celebrating it for a month um <clears throat> we've been we've been thinking about a merch store 
So this may be the thing that this may be the thing that uh, that kicks us off <laughs> a little bit. Yeah. Um, but this is great. This has been fantastic. Um, anything else you want to add about the logo, your process, uh, any anything else that uh, that people should know about you? Uh, first of all, I should thank you for not giving a particular direction and just giving a brief. So I had this all freedom, and uh, my 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 initial thoughts were in all the directions. I've seen previous awesome uh, logos that you had. Uh, uh, as examples, and I wanted to do something really different from what you have already. And uh, yeah, I think it's all the creative freedom and not having a particular brief has helped me to get something like this. That's great. That's great. And uh, obviously, people can get in touch with you. I, I closed your site. Remind people the website name again. Yes, please. I would love to collaborate on fun projects and I'm really looking forward to, you know, have fun interactions and get to socialize with the people having similar interests as me and just get more exposure onto it. What's your URL again? It's sharmotion.com? Uh, sharmotion.com, yes. That's what I thought. Okay, so let me just, there you go. I got it right. <laughs> oh, I don't have R there. S-H-A-M-O-T-I. Oh, okay, hold on. Oh, idiot, Doug. Sorry. No problem. There. This is the, this is the, there it is. Yes, that's correct. Yes. 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 Honestly, uh, you know, and I'm hearing from some people on the side, they're just, this, and board members in particular, they're just stoked about all of this. Yeah. I am incredibly excited about it as well. Uh, so on behalf of all of us here at Think Northwest, number one, thank you. Number two, We'll see you up in Seattle. We'll see you up in Seattle. Yeah. Uh, it's yeah, just and it's let just, me know when you are in the town, and I would oh, yeah. definitely love to meet you all. Yes, we will. We will definitely get together and celebrate a bit. I'm going to have you hold on the back uh, backstage here for a second when I, as I wrap up here. Uh, but to all of you, I mean, again, what a great logo! What a great program! Uh, if you are an artist, if you know some artists in the Pacific Northwest, please get in touch with us. Go to thinknw.org. For those of you who are members, thank you so much for your support. For those of you who are not yet members, get in touch with us. Go to thinknw.org. We are closing the year strong, and 2024 is going to be amazing, and we want you to be part of that journey. Again, thinknw.org. And um, on behalf of our amazing board spread across the Pacific Northwest, my name is Doug Zanger. I am executive director of Think Northwest, and we will see everybody next time.